What's up guys? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be discussing 5M routing buckets. So routing buckets are pretty much dimensions within a server. So I could be in one dimension and my friend could be in another dimension, but we won't be able to see each other because that's the point of the routing bucket. All right. So if you guys like the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, helps out the bunch. Get on that road to 5K. So yeah, let's get right into this video. So today we're going to be creating like an apartment system just to, you know, make it a little more uh, straightforward on how this actually works. So we're going to be creating an apartment, like I just said, that you enter here and we're going to be using Bob IPL. And we're going to be creating this, um, this IPL here, and then this will be the apartment that you can spawn into. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is create a targetable object with ox target to make it so you can enter the apartment. So this is Eclipse Tower. So chances are is that there's already some sort of apartment here through your base script, but this is more just an example. So now that we have that coordinates, we're gonna set that up in our config. I already have a file set up here. Um, it's just a basic file. You can use my template. It's just, you know, some basic functions in here. So I don't have to take forever to type. And I won't be using the print method. I'll be using the debug method because I, I started using this a lot more. And it's a lot nicer than typing print because I get this nice debug header and it matches with the config debug variable. So we're going to set config dot apartment IPL chords. And that's just going to hold this, which is a VEC3 because we need it later on when we load the IPL using Bob's uh, helper functions. Well, actually, I don't even think they're really helper functions. Bob's functions, they're just natives, but we're gonna need it in, uh, anyway. So we're also going to need this here. We're gonna need this spot here for the enter chords. So we're gonna do config dot enter chords. That will automatically paste in the VEC4 for us. And then we're going to need to TP back up to the apartment so we can get the place to spawn the player at. So I will be showing you how this how this works with another client. I'm on the. Uh, well, not yet, but I'll be loading my other client onto the server so you can see. We'll grab this and we'll call this. Um, config dot. Spawn, spawn chords equals vec4. There we go. So there's our three variables for coordinates. All right, so we're just going to put this in a thread. So I'm just going to call my snippet and then we're going to put it inside our ox target. So we're going to do exports dot ox underscore target dot add box zone. And we're going to do parentheses, squiggly brackets, enter that down. There we go. So now we're going to need the chords. So chords is going to be config.enterchords.xyz because that's a vector four. We don't need to pass it a fourth value. Size. The size is also going to be a vec three, which I find that one one three is pretty good for uh, a player size box a name is going to be apartment enter test because i'm gonna do test so it doesn't i don't i don't want it to mess with any other one then debug is obviously going to be config.debug which is going to be true anyway so we can see the zone and then we're going to need our options which is going to be two squiggly brackets we're only going to have one set of options here, so we're just going to put it into two squigglies. So we're going to have distance is going to equal 1.5, which is a normal value. And then icon is going to be empty for now, and then we'll have comma, forgot a comma. And then we're going to need, we're going to need our label, which would be enter apartment. And then we're going to need on select. And then this will be where we call our event. So there's that. So if I, if I go back down, trying to start it, 
There we go. So there's our enter zone. So we third eye it, enter apartment. Which it could be a better idea to back it up a little bit so it's more against the door. So let's just change that. Just so it's close to the door. There we go. Okay. So once we enter, we obviously we need to I I'll try not to say obviously. I say obviously a lot on accident. Sorry guys, but that's just how I am. So we're going to need to set the entity's bucket so it doesn't interfere with another another player that's also inside another apartment. So we're gonna keep a local um list of apartments. So let's just call it local APT in use, which is just going to be empty on server start. So every time a player enters an apartment, we're going to add them to the list. And every time a new player needs a bucket, we're just going to add to the index of list to one. So it's always above what what's already there. <clears throat> I'm going to delete this callback. I'm going to create a net event called TW dash buckets. And this is a server event, so we're going to name it server. We're going to call this set player bucket. No, actually, we're going to call this send player to APT. We're going to have, we're going to just do local SRC equals source. And we're going to then add, so we're just going to add, actually, I'm trying to figure out if I want to, we could either put source inside of apartments and use and keep a list of the players that are also in the apartment and then just remove them from the list. Or I can use, or I could uh, keep memory and just keep a int and just add to the int each time someone joins because it doesn't really matter. We don't really need to keep access to the source. We just need the number itself. So what we'll do is we'll do, we'll put it at one to start just so to make sure it never goes to zero because zero is the default bucket. So what we'll do is we'll put APT in use plus or equals APT in use plus one. So that will put the player in a new bucket. So then we're going to call the native set player routing bucket and then we're going to set the player which is src and the bucket's going to be apartment in use and since we're already in the server file we're going to copy this and we're going to reset player bucket so the default bucket is always zero so we're just going to set the bucket back to zero so we have that all set so next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to call the function to actually spawn the player in the in the apartment send player to apt so we're going to call this function so we're first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the interior id so we're going to do local interior that's interior equals get interior at cores which is just we're just going to get these cords here which so, oh yeah it needs to be a vector of xyz what's this error oh it's because i'm putting xyz it should still work though Wait, isn't it a, it's a vector three so it doesn't need to have xyz it's already uh, already that we're getting the interior course. Next thing we need to do is we need to load the interior. Load interior, which all we have to put in is the interior. And then the next thing we need to do is refresh here. And then we just do interior, which we don't technically need to re re refresh it. I don't think in unless we make changes, but I like to have that just in case whenever I mess with IPLs. The next thing we need to do is set the entity heading set entity or we need to set the cords set entity cords which the entity in this case is the player so let's get a reference to the player local player equals player ped id the entity cords we're going to set the players cords we're going to set them to 
enter chords. Wait, no, I think actually enter chords is this one here. Okay, yeah, so I actually think I did that. Spawn, we need spawn chords. Spawn chords dot X dot Y dot Z. And I have found that sometimes setting the entity chords by doing it like this, where you just put the put the chords like that, sometimes it messes it up. So sometimes I'll bliss them out like this, and then sometimes I'll just have them into one variable. It's sometimes I've noticed it just depends on the native. It's kind of it's kind of weird sometimes. So alive, true, dead, false, ragdoll, false, clear area, false. So we're setting the chords now. So next thing we need to do is we're going to set entity heading which is going to be the same thing player but this time we're going to get config.spawnchords.w so at this point we're actually going to trigger the event here to change the bucket because the interior is loaded but the player hasn't tp'd yet i mean this stuff's going to all happen instantly but we're just going to make sure we trigger this first there we go so now we have that to trigger right away so next thing we're also going to need to do is we're going to set up we're going to need to set up the box zone to actually leave the apartment which we're just going to set up here so we want it to always be set up so that if someone leaves the server while they're in their apartment on accident or they crash which they should try not to do but so they can so they can make sure they can leave the apartment apartment leave, leave or test we want it just to always be there just in case so leave apartment and we're going to it's pretty much the same here we're going to do leave apartments want to call this here and then we're going to do the same we're going to reset the bucket so instead of this we're going to call this function instead which i think we can actually unload the interior unload uh maybe not Probably, there's probably no reason to right now. But, you don't see unloadings here. It's fine for now. It's not that big of a deal. But we don't need that stuff anymore. So, we're actually going to set the entity cords not actually in the in there anymore. We're going to set them to, ent to spawn cords instead. And then, then we'll, we're going to send us back to the regular bucket. And then that will be all good and dandy. So, let's restart here so i also do have a command in here i forgot to say we have this bucket command that will tell us what bucket we're on so so you can see we're in the apartment and if i do bucket i should be in bucket two and then if i leave i restarted it oops i think i might still be in bucket two nope i'm bucket zero Okay, so if I go in, we do bucket, I'm in bucket two. But if I walk out, do bucket, I'm in bucket zero. So let me load in my other client and show you the whole the whole point of all this. Clients, you can see. So the one on the left is client two, and the one on the right is client one. So sometimes there's a little bit of lag. So it's just because I have really high settings and it's loading two games at once. But if I go in here and we enter the apartment as this guy... We can do F8 bucket to our bucket two. Let me actually stop that cargo. We're bucket two. And if I windows out and go into this client, go in, we should be bucket three. See, we're bucket three. And the clients, they cannot see each other because we're in separate buckets. So if I type bucket, we're in client three. But when we go outside of the outside, I'm back to bucket zero and if i take him out we're back to bucket zero so we can see each other again so the whole premise of doing this is so you can 
you know, have separate things going on in the same MLO so you don't have to have multiple the MLOs. This is a great resource to use. I'm using it in my crypto script. So there can be like 400 people in one warehouse, but it's all, they're all in their own instance. So another thing I forgot to say in the script itself is this, this approach probably isn't the best approach to use to keep track because this number is just going to keep going up and up and up and up. So you might actually want to put it into a list, but like I said before, this is just a proof of concept of how this actually works. So another thing you can do too, if you want your player to be able to spawn, um, say like a, a chest or something to hold their inventory, you can do set entity routing bucket and it will do the exact same. And to make sure it goes in the same routing bucket as your player, all you need to do is your end ID would be here which I'm just going to hold that there for an example. All you do is get player routing bucket, and you would just put that into there instead, and you put the source, and it would put it in the same routing bucket as your player. But that is along the same lines of what we're already doing, so I'm not going to explain that in this video because it's, like I just said, it's along the same lines. So that's this script. I will be posting this on my GitHub if you guys want to download it to keep it, to, you know, kind of help you out. But if you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Come check out my streams. I'm trying to stream every day, development streams. Join my Discord and have a great day. Goodbye.